Hey there, how are you? My name is James Lee, and you're watching my channel 5149, where I share my thoughts about business and politics from an independent perspective. If you're watching this video the day after its release, it's Wednesday, November 4th, 2020, the day after election day here in the United States. We made it! Anyway, I recorded this before the election, so I have no idea who won, but what I do know is that no matter who ends up being our next president, the hyper-partisan tribal environment we live in is something that is unlikely to change. Partisan journalism has made it easier and easier to remain in a comfortable echo chamber where ideas we agree with are reinforced and ideas we disagree with are either denigrated or absent altogether. And social media has also made our bubbles even more insular. Major platforms like Facebook and Twitter use centralized algorithms, among other processes that curate a user experience that would conform to the comfort zone of said user. I guess this is really no secret, but since posting videos on my own YouTube channel, I've had the opportunity to see it firsthand from a creator point of view. My last video about Barack Obama has, I think, zero dislikes, and I know for sure there are people out there who will have disagreed with what I said, which means that YouTube has somehow figured out a way to only show my videos to people who are more likely to agree with me. That being said, I'm not saying that I don't value community. I do, I appreciate my audience very much and I want them to enjoy my videos. I just also find a lot of value in listening to different perspectives, ideas from different cultures, people with upbringings different than my own because I think it positively informs my worldview and gives me a chance to more deeply understand nuanced issues. Like I don't think it does the public any good for Twitter to lock the New York Post out of their Twitter account and ban them from tweeting because they ran an unsavory story about Hunter Biden. This will only create a world where we have two Twitters, two Facebooks, two of everything. I mean, if you disagree with something, instead of suppressing it or covering up the story, write something new, a counter article explaining why the opposing point of view is wrong, and then let the people make up their own minds. That's why I'm a big fan of a panel like this Joe Rogan experience, election night special with Alex Jones, Tim Dillon, and Kyle Kalinske. You of course have on one side Alex Jones, a conspiracy theorist who is quite controversial to say the least, but you also have someone like Kyle Kalinske, a very level-headed leftist YouTube commentator who has some really interesting ideas and perspectives on how to approach some of the problems we face in America. I understand some people's immediate visceral reaction to Joe Rogan giving a microphone to someone like Jones, but on the other hand, there are probably people who think that Kyle Kalinske is some kind of crazy socialist or communist sympathizer. So I, I think this kind of panel is good for America. I mean, how often are you gonna be able to have the opportunity to bring together fans of Alex Jones and Kyle Kalinske? The point I'm making is that I think having this type of unfiltered two, three, or maybe even four hour exchange of ideas is good for America, not for hokey reasons like we should all love each other and hold hands and sing whatever that song is called, Kumbaya, although that probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But for me, it's much more pragmatic. Despite what our leaders might say, they want us divided into different groups. It's easier for them that way. The reason why I think it's important to get outside the comforts of tribalism is that if we continue to fall for the traps that the political elites and the mainstream media have laid out for us, dividing us into this camp and that camp, arguing about how Democrats are gonna turn America into a socialist state, or about how Republicans are supporting white supremacists, then we are going to be way too busy dealing with these squabbles to notice all the corrupt things that are happening in plain view. Corporations taking over our government, both Democrats and Republicans, controlled by their corporate overlords. The richest people in our country profiting off the COVID-19 pandemic. Defense contractors perpetuating the military industrial complex, keeping us entangled in endless foreign wars. If we continue to fall for these efforts to divide us, no matter who becomes our next president, we'll never get our democracy back. I'll end my thoughts here today, but I'd love to hear about where you go to get your news. Do you listen to people who maybe don't share the exact same views as you? Uh, comment below, because I'm always on the lookout for news sources. Uh, if you enjoyed my content, please like and share with people who you think would enjoy it or keeping on theme with this video, maybe people who you think wouldn't enjoy it. Uh, also subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I appreciate your time and I'll see you next week.